and uh, we will go on ahead and get started with newspaper knowledge. So first, uh, what can you use a newspaper for? Well, very obviously, uh, they, they're mostly for keeping up with the news, but you can use them for so many other things. Um, at the library, we help a lot of small business owners, and small business owners can use newspapers to keep up with business news, to learn about competitors, um, about people who are doing similar things. Um, obviously, genealogy. We have a fantastic history and genealogy department at the county library. And um, so we have access to a lot of really great historical newspapers um, and just history in general. Like that's, yes, the newspapers are kind of for the genealogy department, but you can find such cool historical information in those newspapers. Um, and just as a personal note, that's what I tend to use our collection for. Um, there's just such great stories um, and recipes and all kinds of things in the older uh, newspapers. And kind of on a similar note, um, if you happen to be a writer, a creative writer, um, a nonfiction writer, whatever kind of writing you like to do, uh, there's a good chance that there are newspapers that can help you with that. Um, I run several different um, kind of world building classes um, throughout the year that all are about library resources and how you can use them as a writer. And uh, yeah, the, the historical papers have really fun things like um, little notices and stuff that basically are stories all in and of themselves. So lots of creative writing ideas that you can mine from the newspapers, um, journalism, cooking, crafting. There's a lot of different things you can use newspapers for. So when you look at our collection, really look at it with an open mind and kind of think outside of the box of just reading the news. There is so much more that you can be doing with these. And uh, we have a lot of different historical and current newspaper databases. Um, we are not going to be looking at all of them, just several. Um, so for of the historical, again, here's just a list. Um, we'll be looking at three. Um, and then for the current, we'll also be looking at three because the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and Access World News are actually the same thing. Um, but basically these are all fantastic places to get newspapers and we'll be looking at most of them. All right, so I have a message from someone saying they're not hearing anything. Um, is anyone else not uh, hearing or is anyone hearing me right now? If you are, could you please say so in the chat? Because it could be me or it could be, okay. So most people can hear. Um, let me see if I can message this person. All right, thank you for that. So I'm just gonna keep on going here um, and I hope hope they'll be able to join the audio. Okay, so um, we're going to get started with the historical St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Um, and like I said, I will be sending a PDF. All of these will be, uh, you can, all of these are linked, like I could just click this to go there, um, but I'm gonna show you how to access them from the library homepage. Now, hopefully most of you are familiar with the library website. Um, if you are not, it is slcl.org, basically the acronym for St. Louis County Library um, .org. And all of our databases are located under research. So if we select research, um, we are then given multiple different ways to access um, the databases. I'm not gonna show you every single one, I'm really going to only show you two, um, but there are different ways if you want to explore on here um, that you can find out what we have because uh, we have a lot more than just newspapers. Um, first though, if you are looking specifically for newspapers, you can always use um, our Just For You categories for reader, 
Um, if you click on reader, you actually have the option to select newspapers and get a list that way. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, just, you know, you can see everything that we've got even more than again, what I'm covering right now. Um, and uh, we also do, I'm not talking about them today. Um, we have a lot of digital magazines um, in our databases. So that's really nice as well, if you are ever interested in that. Um, and although it's not listed here, um, I don't believe, yeah, no, it's not. Um, Overdrive slash Libby in our e-media collection also has a massive collection of magazines as well, including a lot of current events magazines, um, which, you know, you can kind of consider newspapers in a way. Um, I am was not planning on covering that, but if we do have time at the end of the session, um, I can show you what that looks like if you're not familiar with it. Uh, Overdrive is really fantastic for those current events, um, news, uh, or sorry, magazines. Um, but yeah, so that was again, if you go to research and then you go to the just for you and the reader, and then you can select newspapers. Um, now, my personal favorite way to access all of the databases, um, and it's really the fastest way, if you know the name of the database that you are looking for, is right over here on the left hand side, resources A to Z. Um, it's a lot fewer clicks to use this, again, just as long as you know the name of the database you're looking for, in which case we are looking for the historical St. Louis Post Dispatch. So we will click on the letter H. Now, once we're here, um, I'm gonna scroll down. Uh, we are not going to be looking at them, but the historical New York Times and the historical newspapers, US major dailies um, are the exact same database um, in terms of how they look. So once you've seen me use the Post-Dispatch, um, you, you will be able to get in, in, into the New York Times, into US major dailies and do the exact same thing. Um, so yeah. A couple things, other things here, um, a lot, not this particular one, but there are quite a few of our databases that will have video tutorials that explain how to use the resources. Um, we have been working in the reference department on getting videos up for all of these different databases. Obviously it's slow going. We don't have all of them up yet, um, but you will have this recording. So you can watch me uh, at any time, walk through any of these, um, so yeah. Keep an eye out for those videos if you ever want a refresher on um, either one of the databases I've discussed, or if you're just curious about what a database can do. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out is that we do have this chat feature in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, that will be open when the reference department is available to answer questions over chat, which is basically from whenever we open to a half hour before the library closes. Um, and it's a really fast way of getting help. So it's a lot faster than calling. It's a lot faster than email. Uh, we answer those chats all day. So if you ever need to get in touch with the reference department or have a question about the databases um, or about research, that's a great place to go. So all that preamble aside, let us take a look now at the historical St. Louis Post Dispatch. And it is going to ask me at this point, uh, and it will ask you for your login information. So, you know, you'll just enter that. And yes, everything that I'm showing you today, first of all, you can access from home. And secondly, you will need a library card to access um, at all. So once we're in the historical post dispatch, um, it's pretty straightforward. It does put us in the advanced search. Don't worry about that. You can just put in whatever keyword it is you're looking for here. Um, again, our historical newspapers are going to tend uh, to be generally helpful for those who are interested in genealogy or history. But again, think outside of the box. Um, my, like I mentioned, the creative writing thing, lots of stories in here. Um, and I briefly mentioned, so I use these for finding old recipes. Old recipes are some of, are, they're wonderfully fun. They are often delicious. And it's just really exciting to make things that people made, you know, hundreds of years ago. Um, so yeah, just kind of explore if you were interested in that kind of thing. There's just tons of uh, cool things you can do with this. Um, I'm gonna look up something pretty straightforward. I'm gonna look up Josephine Baker. 
famous St. Louis native. So whatever you're interested in, you can look it up there. Um, again, I just looked up a name, Josephine Baker. You could put in one of your uh, ancestors in there and see if they come up. Um, again, this is just the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, but if we were in the New York Times or the US Major Dailies, it would look the same. Now, once we have run our search, we may want to kind of narrow it down a little um, because a lot of these, uh, Josephine Baker will have been mentioned many times over the course of the post-dispatch. Um, here's one from 1994, 2001. Um, so that's great if you're looking for something that's more of a reflection on her life or maybe people discussing her impact at a later date. Um, however, if you are interested in reading what was being said about her during her lifetime, um, then I recommend coming over here on the left-hand side to publication date. You could enter any date range that you wanted, um, or you can kind of just click on these bars. Uh, if you hover over them, it'll give you basically the decade that it covers. So it looks like she was written about a lot in the 30s. So we're going to click on that just to then see um, that will narrow our results. We are seeing, you know, primary sources from when she was alive. Um, so here we go. Josephine Baker was married. And here is the kind of notice about that, uh, published on November 30th, 1937. So uh, the nice thing about the historic papers is that you are generally going to get these beautiful full scans of the entire paper. And I love that because you get all kinds of quirky things. Um, you will get advertisements, you will get photographs, all kinds of wonderful images. So there is our article right there. Um, but again, you can see the entire paper. And you can actually, if we come up here, uh, that is on the first page, but we can go on ahead and flip through all 34 pages of this newspaper. So you can read it just like you would have on November 30th, 1937. Um, so pretty cool. And then if you were interested in any particular article, you can download the PDF. Um, now that will download the entire thing, um, which if you try and print it, just saying, it'll print on one sheet of paper, which is pretty tiny. Um, so just be, be aware of that. Um, Sometimes it will give you the option to just see the article, like if we were looking up again, Josephine Baker, to just see that article, but, but not always. Um, I think it depends on the particular paper. So anyway, um, you can download it, you can email it, you can print it. Um, and yeah, they give you a bunch of different options for what, however you prefer um, to get the material. So. That is pretty much it for ProQuest Historical Post-Dispatch. Again, a pretty straightforward database, a, a lot of fun. St. Louis has a fascinating history. Um, and this particular database goes all the way back. Oh, I'm not actually gonna remember. It's, it's basically from when the paper started, which was in the 1800s. Um, so, and then it runs until the early 2000s. Uh, but basically, there is no gap in our coverage of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch newspaper. You can access it from the very first issue all the way up till today's, which um, we're looking at the historical papers first, but you'll see that when we look at the, uh, the current ones. So moving on um, to newspapers.com. Now I am going to uh, freely admit I am biased. I love newspapers.com. Um, it is definitely one of my favorite databases that we have. Um, and it's just, I honestly, just really fun to use. There's no other way to say it. Um, now, from now on, I am going to be using the links in the presentation, but otherwise you could access it by again, going to research, reader, newspaper, excuse me, newspapers um, or uh, resources A to Z. Either way would work very well. So. Newspapers.com is um, actually, it's kind of like, it's, it's part of Ancestry kind of. Um, so very, very similar. Um, well, not, not really similar, but they're kind of like the same idea, right? Genealogy, history, resources, um, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and this one I feel like has a very, very good interface. 
Um, and the best part of it is, is that it is very easy to make uh, essentially clippings of whatever it is that you want to, um, to save. So um, I often use this to show students um, about like Ida B. Wells and all kinds of other historical figures. Um, but I am going to be a little indulgent and we are going to look up a chocolate cake just so I can show you guys how fun it is to look up these old recipes. Um, obviously you could add in a date range if you wanted. Um, and this is pretty cool actually. You can see we have papers actually going back to 1690 in here. So we're talking some very, very old newspapers. Um, obviously we don't have tons of them that are that old. You can kind of see here on this chart, how many we have, how many pages are scanned. Uh, and it goes up significantly after 1900. Um, but we even have some more current ones in here, although most of our coverage ends around 2000. So I would not come here if you're looking for like really, really current. If you are specifically going for current events, this is not the best place to go. Um, however, some of it is covered in here if, if you're thinking like within the last five years or so. Um, but we're going to leave that blank. Um, we can add a location. So um, one thing I do teach like a food history class every now and then. And uh, this is something that you can try to do with this database. Like say you have a great grandmother or some recipe um, that someone used to make something in your family and the recipe was lost. Well, I can make no promises that that recipe could ever be found. But a lot of people uh, historically would cook from newspapers. Um, it was a very easy way to get recipes for very cheap. You didn't have to buy a cookbook um, and people would share their recipes on here. So it is possible that you can find some of your relatives recipes in here if they submitted them to a newspaper. And if not, you can look up like, okay, great, great grandma's wonderful chocolate cake. Well, if she lived in a specific area of Missouri, you could look up chocolate cake recipes in that area of Missouri in the years that she was alive. Anyway, again, maybe a little bit of a nerdy tangent, but just kind of think outside of the box on how you can use these because you can use it in fascinating ways. All right, so let's just do our search for chocolate cake. And um, it's gonna run the search. Again, we didn't put any limitations by date, by location on here. Um, so all we need to do now then is actually look through our results. I really like this newspaper database because it is really it really gives you a good look at where that phrase is. So you like chocolate cake is mentioned a lot of times that aren't actually a recipe, but you know, here you can see this is actually going to be a recipe. Um, some of them are will not, some of them will not, you know, I, I'm not going to scroll through all of them to find something. We'll just go with the Betty Crocker one. Um, but yeah, you can use that to kind of get an idea of, does it look like what you're looking for? So once you find something, you can always go on ahead and select it. And let's see. Oh, actually, this isn't a recipe. Oh, well, same idea. Got a nice picture at least. Um, so like in the historical post dispatch, this is going to be full scans. Um, it is really easy to kind of zoom in and out. Um, you can search the paper, you can go through the pages as well. Um, so lots of uh, different things, uh, sorry, the pages are actually down here. Um, lots of things you can do here. But unlike the uh, historical post, which you, you very often end up just being able to save the entire page as an image, um, this one, you can actually make clippings, which is fantastic. Um, to make clippings, you do have to have an account. Um, I recommend registering with email um, un unless you have your own personal Ancestry account, uh, in which case, great, you can actually use that to log in as well. Now I already have an account, so I'm just gonna log in using that. And here we go. It's going to just give me this. I like the picture, so I'm gonna just clip that. So I can just kind of 
make that look like whatever I want it to. I can add details. Again, fantastic for genealogy, fantastic for writing. Um, if you want to put anything in there, great. You can even add more details. They give you a lot of room to do that. Um, I'm not going to put anything. I'm just going to go on ahead and clip it. Uh, and then they give you all of these options for sharing or uh, emailing, printing, whatever. So I'm going to go back. Uh, actually, I'm not going to go to the home. If you ever want to see your clippings, you can actually then come up here to clippings. Um, and you can see, like, I've got 263. It takes a little while to load. Um, it, it'll populate here with a, a lot of recipe clippings. Um, but you can also see uh, everyone's clips. Yeah, it's taking a lot longer than usual. Oh, well, normally that'll just be like a page full of little clippings. Um, I'll double check it later to make sure everything's working okay. But yeah, that's newspapers.com. There is more that you can do in here, but I am going to keep moving uh, because we have other databases to see. Um, newspaper archive, this is the last historical one that I'm going to mention, and I'm going to go pretty quickly. Um, personally, between it, it's very similar to newspapers.com. Both of them are, you know, they are for the entire United States and even have international newspapers. Both of them go back pretty far in terms of history, um, and both of them will give you full scans and you can clip and save things in both. The interface is a little more friendly in newspapers.com, um, so I tend to prefer it, uh, but there's still very good stuff in this one. Again, we'll just do a super quick look in here because it, it looks very and functions very, very similarly. Um, so they give you this really nice, again, you're doing genealogy, you can throw in a first name, last name. Um, I like to use keyword searches personally, um, but that works. And then if you have a particular like newspaper you're interested in, you can throw in that name here. You can look up papers by location, by date, um, or by name using these as well. Um, so I'm going to go on ahead and we'll throw in a keyword. We'll do, yep, Louisiana Purchase. And we'll go on ahead and do a search. So if you're doing a keyword search, and that includes if you're looking for an individual, um, this is the kind of results page you are going to get. Um, it's again, you, you're going to just get like snippets of where your phrase comes up in this description, but it's usually pretty hard to read and they don't show you that nice little snippet that newspapers.com does. Still, again, great stuff. And the newspapers are going to be very different in each one of these. Um, but we can narrow it by location. Let's say we want to do USA, update, and then we'll put it to Missouri so we can actually see what was being written about, uh, about the exposition here, where it occurred. So yeah, once we do that, we can just see the papers. I love these old 1800 papers. They usually have just like the coolest illustrations and stuff. Um, and really fun layout. So yeah, really fun for history, really fun for um, exploration um, of uh, your genealogy, all of that. And yeah, you can you can save the image, you can um, crop it, you can do all kinds of things. Um, you will need to create an account it's separate from your newspapers.com one. So yeah, you would have to, you know, have a totally different account on this one. But yeah, it's it, it is still really, really great. Lots of cool stuff. Again, I love these. The Louisiana uh, Purchase Exposition, I highly recommend looking up. Uh, the illustrations and photographs that they got for that are just absolutely like chef's kiss. They're wonderful. Okay, I'm going to take a quick pause here before we get into the uh, current newspapers just to get take a little drink and soothe my throat. And if there are any questions, this would be an excellent time to put those in the chat. All right, Jeanette, I see. How would I access my hometown newspaper? Um, do you know the name of your hometown newspaper? And if you do, you can just go on ahead and type it into the um, 
the Toledo Blade. And is that, I'm sorry, I'm not from Missouri. Is that in Missouri? Okay, Ohio, okay, thank you. Um, so let's let's just really quickly here go back because that's a, a good question. If you're looking for a specific newspaper, um, I would go like, for example, we could come to uh, newspapers.com. You would go to papers and you can actually search for the paper by name. Um, so we can look up Toledo and see. So I'm not seeing that one in here. So let's quickly check, not newspapers.com, but newspaper archive. So not every, we unfortunately like not again, not every newspaper is gonna be in here, but this is how you would check um, for what we have. Um, this is everything. I think this is everything on one page. Let's actually do it this way. Let's do it by title. Invalid, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of looking into that. Um, I don't see it here, but that doesn't mean it's not accessible online. There's actually a free website that is run by the uh, United States government called Chronicling America. So I'll take a look. We're not gonna do that right now because. I am going to keep going, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see because it's just because I'm not seeing the Toledo blade right now doesn't mean we don't have access to it or that it's not possible to access it all. Okay, and then Maggie, um, I see where do you start to get information about newspaper? Okay, so Maggie, I am actually recording this entire session, um, so you can, it'll go up on YouTube. Um, probably within a few days. So you would be able to watch the entire thing and, and see, you know, um, how I accessed everything. Um, it's essentially, it's going to be really quickly through the library website, research, and then you can either look up the databases by name under resources A to Z, or you can go to reader newspapers. So those are the really quick ways um, of how I'm jumping around. Great questions. Okay. Let's get in with the current newspapers then. Lots of time in the past. Well, now we're on to the present. So Access World News. Um, this is a really good one for current events. Um, it is going to be, I would, I would say, think smaller newspapers in uh, your, your big newspapers. We're gonna like the Wall Street Journal and you know, all of those New York Times, we're gonna get to in a second. Those are not in here. Um, but the St. Louis Post dispatches, so that's pretty nice. Um, and this one, as the name suggests, Access World News uh, is global in scope. So let's get that one all loaded up here. And yeah, so you can throw a keyword in. <laughs> you can see some of the things that I've been searching for. A um, lot of different names uh, for different uh, reference questions. Um, but okay, so yeah, you can throw in a keyword, you can search just by date, you can search by the map, which we're actually going to take a look at in a second here. Um, I also do like the suggested topics. Um, I work a lot with students. So this is something we use quite often, because they'll be writing a paper on a certain current event or issue. Um, and then they can just come here. And you know, e very easily find like, let's go to health something having to do with whatever health issue that they're they are writing a paper on. Um, so this is nice for you too as well. Um, if it's something that you're wanting to learn more about, like you're wanting to learn more about, oh, I don't know, aromatherapy. Let's go with that. You can click on this and it's actually going to run a very, very big search for you. Um, so that's really nice. And it'll just bring up literally everything that's been written anywhere in the world on this topic. Um, so like, it looks like this one, no idea where that, New Berlin, okay, great, with Franklin, Wisconsin. Um, so you'll get things from all over, um, but I'm gonna go quickly, just jump back here. Um, the other thing that is nice is on this right-hand side, we have a lot of like the local interest papers, North Side Journal, South County, Journal, etc., and the St. Louis Post Dispatch collection. Uh, so that's what I'm going to show here. We can look at the St. Louis Post, 
And we have two different versions of this. Um, so we have a text database that goes from 1988 to the present. Um, and then we have an image database. So I'll show you the differences between those two. Um, first, let's look at the text as the name, uh, or as you know, me saying text implies, there are no images here. It is not a full scan of the newspaper. It is literally, you click on the date and then you get a list of all the articles that ran in that paper. It's a little slow, but here we go. And then we can just click on whichever one of these we are interested in and read the article no images, nothing like that. It's just very, very straightforward. Um, once you see the text, it's one nice thing. You can listen to this read out loud. You can email it, you can print it, you can download it, whatever you want. Um, and you do not need to create an account to do any of that. Um, it's just as simple as clicking on a couple buttons, whatever you need up here. Um, so, that is what the um, text version looks like. It's got that really, really nice interface where you can see the months of the year here and click on the months. You can change your year up here. Again, going back, um, it's basically pretty much full text um, back into the 80s on here. And if you're looking for something older or you want scans of maybe something from the 80s, you could go to the historical post. Now, if you want to see the images of like the most recent newspapers, and this would be a full scan, you can select instead of uh, the text format, the image format. This does not go back as far as you can see here, it's 2020 to the present. And then let's just take a look here. Um, so let's just do the 11th. And there you go. You've got the full thing. You can go navigate through the pages. Um, you can actually clip little sections to then print or you know email or whatever to yourself. Um, so this is this is nice because you know if you want to see all of the surroundings, all of the images and the formatting, um, you can do it here. Now I, you know I double I checked a while back. I don't think. Oh, no, they are here. The funnies and the crossword look like they do make it into here. Um, so that's kind of fun because that's, you know, um, I don't know. I like I always like the, the old funnies and everything like that. So you can see any of that again, only going back to 2020, um, but it is here. So there you go. All right, I'm going to go back to the main news bank page really quickly because I just want to give you an idea of how comprehensive this database is by looking at the map. Um, so we can look at the map here um, and obviously we can search. Um, this you know, is not really any different from searching from the main page. Um, what I like this for is that you can actually use it to see the newspapers that you can access from around the world. Um, so for example, let's, let's go to Europe here. Um, just because I know there are some papers in English. There are also tons of papers in other languages on here. So if you are learning another language or are um, have a different native tongue than English, this is awesome. Um, I have a sister who is learning Norwegian right now, for example. So let's just go to Norway because of that. Um, this is a little weird. Like you can't just click on Norway and go see the resources. You actually have to select it from here. Um, and it's, we only have one Norwegian source. And my guess is it's going to be in English, um, but we'll, we'll look at it anyway. Um, so once we do that, we just click on the number of sources and then it'll take us to that list. Um, so it's you know cool to read news from around the world. Um, I tend to like reading, yeah, BBC Norway and it'll be in English, um, but there are a lot of other countries that will have different language uh, papers in here anyway. Um, yeah, sometimes it's fun to read American news from a European perspective, um, or honestly, any other country's perspective. Um, sometimes it's like a nice step back from everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, Newsbank, uh, Newsbank slash Access World News, we call it Access World News. Um, so sorry if I've, I've swapped those around. Um, it's the same thing. <laughs> 
Okay, excellent. So this is a big, big database too. Um, honestly, we could spend more time poking around in here, um, but we are going to keep moving because we've got two more to see here. Um, and I know I've probably already been a little overwhelming with the number of resources. Uh, we just happen to have a lot. So Factiva, I will be pretty quick on this one. Um, Factiva is good for honestly, mostly business uh business news um if you happen to own a business you know or are interested in finances or anything like that factiva is a good option um, because you're going to find a lot more business focused resources in here um, as you can see from this home page you can access the st louis business journal you can access barons um, you know, all different Washington Business Journal, um, all kinds of things like that. Um, you can access the big papers in here, like the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post, New York Times. Um, I am going to show you, though, there is a better database to access those in, um, and I'll show you why. So let's say we want to look at the New York Times. We can click View All, and basically it's it's going to give us every article that the New York Times has run um, in chronological order from most recent to oldest, but it's very hard to like narrow it down by date in here. It's, it's not impossible, um, but like it's going to basically be by month. So if you're looking for a specific issue of the New York Times that ran in January, this isn't the, a great way to get to it, basically. Um, there's another database that is much better for that. Um, but we do have that nice home page. You can see the most current news. Um, you can always run a search in here. Um, so you would just search for whatever you were interested in. Um, and you can even add your source. So like, let's do the St. Louis um, Business Journal or the Business Journal online. Let's say you want an article from there and it's behind a paywall. No problem. We can select it but we do have to put in a keyword we can't just like browse through every single issue um so here's a little cheaty kind of trick if you do want to see everything that you you know is in okay let me backtrack a little like if you were trying to get into a paywalled article what i do is i copy and paste the title into this form like i'll put the the name of the publication copy paste the title of the article and then search and it comes up great for getting past a lot of the barriers like that the Wall Street Journal has and things like that. Um, if you just want to see everything that a, a particular publication has, here's what I do. I put in the publication and then I search for the because pretty much every article is going to mention the at some point. Um, so basically it's a way of seeing most everything. Um, you know, anyway, so yeah great database if you're looking into the business it's not the most user friendly just going to be completely honest but once you learn how to use it um, there's a lot of good information here i think even more foreign language newspapers than we have um, in access world news or at very least an equal amount um, so again if you're looking for um, news from around the world or if you're looking for news in a different language this is a actually really good place to go for that Okay, so that was Factiva, and uh, we are going to finish our newspaper databases with ProQuest Newsstream. And um, we already looked at a ProQuest newspaper website. The ProQuest St. Louis, uh, the historical St. Louis Post Dispatch, was a ProQuest newspaper website. So you can see it basically looks the same. Um, so ProQuest is the big company that runs these. Um, and then you can access different um, smaller databases within. So the historical post, historical times. Um, and then we've got US news stream and global news stream. Um, so like the name suggests, US news stream for US papers, global for international ones. Um, so I'm in US news stream because I do tend to find most people are going to come to me and ask for a US newspaper, so I think this is a better one to show for that. But if you were looking in the global site, you would basically do the exact same things that I am looking for here. 
Um, so all you need to do it once you are in here is you can just search for your keyword. Um, and then let's see here. Interesting. Ah, okay, so they moved it on me. Um, so you can, okay, sorry, I lost my train of thought because the database has changed a little bit since I last used it. That happens sometimes. Um, you can do a keyword. So you can type in an event, a country, a whatever you want in here and just search the entire thing, search all the newspapers. Um, in general, I find that people are tend to want to look at a specific newspaper and usually a specific issue. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. Um, so if that is the case, then you can come up here to this little hamburger menu um, and you can come down and look at the publications. So if we select publications, um, we can see an alphabetical list of all of the different publications that um, you can access in here or you can search for it. So let's do the Wall Street Journal, but you could do the Washington Post, the New York Times, um, Chicago Tribune, lots of the big papers are in here. Um, and then we'll just click search. And once we select that, we do have different options. Um, so especially I find actually the New York Times has tons of different options, um, but basically you kind of have to read the description to figure out if it's what you're looking for. Um, so obviously the Wall Street Journal online, that's gonna be their online articles. Um, we have the magazine that you can access here. So if you just want the paper, then this top one is what you're going to be going for. Um, so sometimes you have to click around to figure out exactly the right one, um, but very often they'll have this picture and it'll say newspaper underneath. So. And if, if it's in the online version, it'll almost always say online in the title. So let's say we want the paper edition. Here we go. Once we're here, we can search just within the Wall Street Journal. So like if you're like, oh man, I read that great article years ago and I can't remember, I lost my clipping of it or whatever. Great, come here, search for your keywords and maybe you'll be able to find it. Um, but if you are looking for a specific issue that you want to view, um, you can do that right here. So you would just click your year. Um, and actually this one goes back pretty far as well to 1982 actually, so not bad. Oh, sorry, 1984 is the full text where it covers. Um, so let's say, well, let's do this. We'll do this year and we'll do January. 7th. Sure, I have no idea. Um, so yeah, that's all you need to do. You just click your year, click your date, and then here you go. You have um, all of the articles that were run in that paper. Um, now, oh dear. Ah, there we go. Let's just do this one. Business news. All right. So if you want to see any of the articles, all you need to do is click on it and you've got the text of the article. Um, there is no way to get images on here either. Um, really the only current newspaper that we have access to any images at all is the Post-Dispatch in Access World News, and it is only the past couple of years that we have access to. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that being said, it is really nice because most things that are paywalled, you would be able to access uh, very easily from here. So, all right, I just covered a massive number of newspapers. We still have 15 minutes left. So I am going to keep talking for just a little bit because I would like to show you guys the, the magazines in um, uh, Overdrive because I a lot of people know about them, but not everybody does, and they are fantastic. Um, but while I'm talking, feel free. This is a great time to put your questions in the chat um, because, um, or if you want, that, that's most of what I had. Like we have covered pretty much everything that I was planning to. Um, if you are wanting to leave now, that is fine. Um, I will just cover a few things that I normally do at the very end, but I'll just quickly mention them here. Um, basically, I just threw a lot 
lot of resources at you. Um, all of them we just scratched the surface on. Um, if you ever have any questions, that is what the reference department is there for. There are lots of us librarians who know these databases very well and are ready to help. Um, obviously, you can call, you can email us at reference at slcl.org. You can chat us like I showed you on that research page. That's the green button in the bottom right hand corner. Um, and then we also do this thing called book a librarian um, where, where you can meet one on one with a reference librarian. So if you are interested in learning about more about these databases or any of our databases uh, or just resources in general at the library, um, we are happy to help you. We do do it a lot for small business owners, um, but I've also helped writers and teachers and researchers and all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, we, basically you let us know what you're interested in learning about and we tailor a session just for you. Um, so if that is something you're interested in, you can access that under using the library and then book a librarian. Um, if you are interested in the genealogy side of things, you would do book a genealogist. Um, while we in the reference department know about the databases, um, the history data and genealogy databases, uh, they are the experts. So definitely go to them if that is your interest. Um, but yeah, book a librarian one on one virtual meetings. Uh, they basically run for an hour and we help you with whatever you need. So pretty cool. So yeah, I just wanted to say that really quickly in case anybody wants to leave early. Uh, but if not, I am going to keep on going with uh, the OverDrive resources. So OverDrive um, is not a database. Everything else that we were looking at, again, that's going to be under research. That's where our databases live on the website. Um, but eMedia is something completely different. So we've got it under books, eMedia, and more. And then we have our eMedia category. Um, so once we come here, uh, we have a lot of different eMedia platforms. Um, but since we're focusing a little more on news and magazines for this one, um, we're going to just look at this one, OverDrive. Um, now we have four different options to access OverDrive. These all essentially take you to the same place. Obviously this one to the teen version, this one to the kids version, both of these to just the general everything version. Um, now a really quick note for those of you um, who are already familiar with OverDrive um, and Libby, the only difference between these two OverDrive was the old app that people needed to access these uh, the uh, ebooks, audiobooks, etc. Um, Libby is the new app where you access those things. And just so you know, they are phasing out overdrive the overdrive app. It will no longer be supported. So you will need to switch over to Libby at some point. Um, and that is that's only if you have it on a mobile device um, as, as an app. Um, if you're accessing it on a desktop, nothing is functionally changed. Um, but yeah, sorry for those of you who really love the OverDrive app. Um, it is basically not going to be any more here very soon. Um, but all right, it's again, you'll be able to access the same resources. The interface just looks a bit different. So. Really quickly, um, OverDrive is where you go to get digital books, audiobooks, even a few movies, not a lot, but there are some on here. Um, but we fairly recently, at least within the last six months, combined, uh, uh, we used to have a different virtual magazine collection and it was put into OverDrive. So if you remember RB Digital, RB Digital is gone, but everything that we had on there is now here. And we now have this category just for magazines. Now, obviously I like cooking. I'm a big fan of the cooking magazines. Um, we have dozens and dozens on here, which is great. But also if you're interested in current events, we do have um, the news and politics section right here. Um, they're constantly adding new magazines. Uh, so they highlight those. Uh, you can see what are popular magazines, celebrity magazines, kids and teens, like there is every topic you can think of in these. Um, so whatever you're interested in, I tend to like looking at the subjects just so you can get an idea of everything that's in here. So like hunting and fishing or photography, travel, 
cars and motorcycles like they're magazines for anything um again i i tend to like the food one so that's what i'm gonna pull up um but yeah once you the, the nice thing about this is um in overdrive if you are not familiar with it um if you're looking up like a book or an audio book it's not basically not everything that you can see in here is always available like we only have so many copies of harry potter and the sorcerer's stone that we can lend out even if it's digital which sometimes confuses people we still have to buy licenses for every copy um so like sometimes you'll have to be on a wait list for a book or an audio book not the case for magazines magazines are constantly available always 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 you can access them whenever you want um and what's even nicer, let's see if I can find a, uh, one that is not, I want one that's serialized because some of these are like special, uh, special editions of the magazine. Okay, let's do, oh goodness, Southern Living. Okay, Southern Living. We'll just try this. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find something. No, I messed. That's not what I'm looking for. Uh, all right, we're gonna go back because I'm thinking that cooking is not a great place to show this. We will do, sorry, I usually practice all of my searches before I teach something and I wasn't planning on this one. Okay, Newsweek, let's do Newsweek. What I wanted to show you was, yes, you can borrow the most recent issue. That's always what's gonna be displayed, but you can select back issues. Um, so we can go here, select back issues, and then just choose whatever it is we're interested in and borrow that one. Um, now, the number of back issues is going to vary by publication. Um, so sometimes you'll have ones that go back years and years and years. And other times you'll have only like two issues because we only just ac started getting access to it. Um, so yeah, once you find something you're interested in, you can borrow it. You can borrow it for seven, 14 or 21 days. Um, and you can just read the magazine in your browser, which is really nice. Um, it is, I don't think it's possible to print from these, like they don't really give you that choice. Uh, I tend to like make, because you can zoom in on an article you're interested in. Uh, let's, you click and then you can click the zoom. So like if there was something that you were interested in, like clipping, um, I print screen, you know, just print the screen and then you can go on ahead and um, if you have an article you really want or a recipe or anything like that. But yeah, they don't have like a handy dandy print button or anything like that. Um, so yeah, really nice. Lots of current events, obviously, but lots of hobbies and other fun stuff in here as well. So that was a, an unexpected addition to the presentation, but I do hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope you enjoyed what I did show you. Um, for those of you that did join later, I am going to be sending a PDF copy of these slides um, in a follow-up email. So that way you will have access to all of the names of the databases and the links to them. Um, and then again, it, it is being recorded. So hopefully that will be up on the YouTube page um, in, a, in a couple days. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you do have any questions, now is the, a great time to, oh, and uh, you are very welcome. All right, I'm so happy that some of you are telling me that you enjoyed it, that you learned something new. Um, that makes me very happy. So thank you so much for attending. I am going to hang out for just a few more minutes here, to see if there are any final questions. Um, but if not, uh, have a wonderful evening and thank you so much again for attending. I really appreciate it.